coffee capsule. It's probably one of the easiest ways to make coffee at home. Just pop capsule in there, of course, slam it down, press a button, and within seconds, we have a nice espresso right here in our hands without having to touch a single coffee bean. But do we know what we're actually sipping on? Do we know the environmental impacts? Do we know the economic impacts? Not so much just for us and our wallets, but what about those down the supply chain, the people right at the very beginning producing the coffee? Today in this video, I want to share with you some of my thoughts and some of my research that I've done around coffee capsules, both good and bad, and I've brought three different types of capsules here to discuss. So hopefully at the very end, we can kind of come away with a few thoughts of our own, new perspectives, and of course, I'll leave some of the, the links down in the description to my research, so you can go check it out yourself. So well, from what I've read, the global capsule market is expected to grow from 2021 at $9.92 billion to $12.33 billion in 2022, in this year. So that's a lot of money. 1.2 billion capsules were produced in the UK alone in 2021. I don't have the global stats for 2022, but in 2018, it was around 59 billion capsules produced. That's pretty huge. That's a lot of capsules. So that being said, there's a few different concerns that often come up when we talk about uh, coffee capsules. And the three that I want to discuss today are the environmental impact. So whether it's plastic, aluminum, or maybe compostable, biodegradable, what's really happening behind the scenes here. And also the taste, what, what's the taste of the coffee that's going to come out. And that, of course, that depends on the coffee that you're putting in there, where it's being sourced. But of course, if you're, if you're comparing it to an espresso machine or just using one of these capsule machines, that'll affect the taste. And then of course, the economic impact down the supply chain. For this discussion, I want to include these three different types of capsules that I've picked up. This one here, it's an aluminum capsule by arguably one of the biggest pioneers in the capsule space. This is an espresso capsule made from aluminum. And in terms of the price here, this comes out to around 52 cents or 52 euro cents at least per capsule, right? Now we've got another one here, which I'm pretty excited about. This is a biodegradable and compostable capsule. And this comes out at around, surprising, a little bit cheaper, 45 cents per capsule. And this is locally roasted right here in Barcelona by a company called 80 plus, or Chinta plus. And then we've got this really nifty reusable capsule. It's all pure metal and a few gaskets which I picked up and I'm going to be filling it with my journey coffee here just to see how it compares. But this is definitely the most expensive upfront uh, cost at 36 euros 90 cents for this one capsule. And then if you add in, of course, the, the price of coffee that we'd be putting in there around five grams, I think it comes out to for the coffee. If you add all that up, you'll need to go through 118 of these compostable capsules to kind of break even on this thing. But we'll discuss that a little bit more uh, and also the, the benefits of using this refillable capsule. So first, let's talk about the environmental impact. As I mentioned, some of the different caveats that we have. This is the aluminum. Of course, there are many other specialty coffee companies which are producing aluminum capsules as well. And the argument always made for aluminum is that it's infinitely recyclable or at least near infinite in terms of how much you can preserve the aluminum. But the problem is that these also have a few other materials. So I originally thought my naivete that you could just take the coffee out of here once it's done, throw it in the recycling bin as you would aluminum, and there you go. But turns out that because of the other materials, it's a little bit harder to, to recycle these and it often requires sort of a specialist facility and that being said, only 20% of capsule users, maybe even less from my research, are recycling these or at least recycling them properly. This, of course, is one of the reasons why Nespresso has their recycling program because it's not so easy as just throwing it out. They have to come collect it and then it makes me think, what's the offset there of having all the shipping back and forth and collection? But also the problem is that that's not really available everywhere that Nespresso capsules are consumed. The onus is kind of put on the individual to figure out how to recycle it properly. 
It just often doesn't happen. In fact, in Hamburg, Germany, I've heard that they've even outlawed all sort of uh, single-use uh, disposable capsules in their government buildings, re reiterating that recycling should not be just an immediate reaction. It should be reducing waste or reducing packaging. So they've taken a stand on the aluminum capsules there. What about the compostable biodegradable? I was pretty excited to find this here in Barcelona. There's 20 capsules in here. It does say specialty coffee capsules, 100% compostable, organic, and then it also says biodegradable on the capsules. So that's that's a little bit tricky as well. For my research, there's a difference between biodegradable, compostable, and then also compostable at home, right? So if you have an industrial co compost in your city, that's great, that's fine. But if you don't, you live in the countryside, is this really gonna break down in your garden? That's something that I just, I don't have written. But there are other companies out there. There's another one called Halo, also from the UK, fully compostable at home capsules. So I'll leave the link in the, in the description for, for Halo. It seems pretty interesting. I've never used it though, so I would be curious to hear your, your thoughts. If you've used it, write it down in the comments. I'll go check it out. But one of the concerns that I do have about this is the shelf life. So compared to the aluminum, one of the biggest benefits, uh, even specialty coffee roaster is mentioning that they can keep that on the shelf for one or two years and have an amazing espresso. Whereas this, I can smell the coffee in here. That tells me that it's not perfectly sealed and I'm not sure, of course it does come with this. So it is sealed once you buy the container, but if you wanna open it up, then it might be a little bit tricky to keep, to keep that coffee super fresh. This right here, this is called the Whey Cup. And so of course you can refill this with five grams of coffee. Um, and as they state on the box, you can refill it infinitely, uh, unless you lose it or break it or something like that. And another thing that they don't write on the box, but has been told to me by the, the guy who sold it to me uh, here in Barcelona was that it is made in Turin, Italy. But uh, if that's something that's important to you, uh, buying something locally, maybe you wanna buy some something from Italy. It seems like a missed marketing opportunity for them. But anyways, that's made there. And I don't really know how much energy goes into producing one of these. Could be interesting to investigate, but in the long run, definitely worth it if you're gonna keep using it over and over and over. It seems very, very sturdy, but I will say that it takes quite a bit of time to, to make and also clean up a coffee, especially considering that it's only five grams. I'm used to drinking like espressos of 18 to 20 grams, so I feel like I'm lacking a little bit when I get the final cup, but look, that's up to you if you're really dedicated to reducing your carbon footprint and you still really wanna use a, a capsule machine and also use your own coffee in the capsules, then this could be a really great option for you. Let's talk about the taste between these three capsules. Let's make three different espressos. Nice. In terms of texture, let's start over here with refillable. Just how you imagine. I actually really like the taste. A lot of really nice balanced coffee flavors there, a little bit closer to filter uh, taste, some acidity. Of course, I put my own coffee in there, so um, I, I knew what to expect. This one over here, this is the 80 plus compostable coffee. Well, all coffee is compostable. Compostable coffee capsule. Also nice and fruity, nice specialty coffee from El Salvador. I really like it. Now this one over here, the Nespresso blend. Hmm, well actually, not too bad. It's got a bit of like a ristretto type flavor to it. Uh, a bit on the salty side, but of course much more crema. So we're getting the most texture, I think, out of this one here. As I mentioned, Nespresso is not the only one making coffee capsules with aluminum. There are other specialty coffee brands that are doing it. So in terms of taste, it will depend on, of course, who you're buying from and everything. But one thing that I like, as I mentioned, the aluminum, because it's nitrogen flushed and hermetically sealed, whatever that means, they can keep a lot of the flavor and the freshness in there so that when it's released, it's basically just as it would have been when you first ground it. There's not a lot of aging happening in the capsule, as far as I understand. Now with the uh, biodegradable, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm not sure how long it lasts in terms of freshness because of that coffee smell that I got when I opened the can. Mm. But I really like the flavor, of course, especially coffee, something a little bit more complex, a little bit more nuanced. This this refillable, this capsule, which I'll have to dig out of here to show you, but basically 
it has four different filters that you can fit on the inside, but I end up just using the one that's, that looks most like the espresso filter, small little holes, but they say that it, depending on the grind size and the coffee you're using, you can change out those filters. But this is, this is still good, it's still good flavor. And uh, as I mentioned, this is not an espresso roast per se, if you're into that kind of nomenclature, but I, I am enjoying it as sort of a, a strong filter. We've got our three coffees here, and the last thing I wanna talk about is the economic impact of drinking coffee from capsules. Now, this is not so much on our wallets, though I will talk about that in just a second, but it's more about the economy that's making its way to the beginning of the supply chain, the producers of our coffee. Now, this is really just a conversation about what coffee is going into the capsule. You can put any, any coffee in the capsules, but what's happening oftentimes with sort of more commercial coffee the farmer isn't isn't getting paid as much as with the specialty coffee. So I'm not here to talk about Nestle. I know it's no secret that they they don't exactly have the best track record for their ethical pricing strategies, but I'm not here to, to slam them either. I'm sure it's a lot more nuanced. But what I can speak to is the specialty coffee uh, roasters. Of course, if you're buying your own coffee and you're putting it in there, you can talk to the roaster and ask them how much was paid at the at the producing level. Right? So that information is becoming increasingly more and more available and even roasters are starting to put it sometimes even on their bags or at least on their websites. So don't be afraid to, to ask them and that is really the, the way that you can be sure and who it's impacting at the very beginning of the supply chain. Now in terms of the impact on our own wallets, I find that just good old fashioned coffee beans tend to win. Even if you compare it to these very affordable specialty coffee compostable capsules, they end up being around 45 cents for five gram for a five gram capsule. Whereas average specialty coffee comes to around 80 cents for 20 grams. So 45 cents for five grams, 80 cents for 20 grams, you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck if you just buy your own coffee and, and make it at home. Like this video if it was helpful to you. Subscribe if you want to see more coffee content coming down the chute. And of course, I will see you in the next video.